Blog Talk Radio. Well, here we go, the early version, and we'll archive it for Wednesday. It is the True North podcast hosted by a brother, a mentor, and a friend to me. I love this guy dearly, Billy North. He's in Seattle. Yours truly playing producer co-host with him, and I'm in Los Angeles, 347-205-9631. And if you happen to miss this, because I realize 30 minutes goes by quick, catch the archive version on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports, podcast platforms, wherever you subscribe to podcasts, powered now by Mancini Media. So without further ado, more of him, less of me. Let me lay that red carpet down, put the podium in its place, hand the mic over. Bill the Threes, how are you? How can people get a hold of you? And, man, oh, man, you gave me one of the best uh, wedding anniversary presents a guy can have tonight on this show. And I'll let you do the introductions after you get your props out of the way, my brother. I'm doing fine. I'm in a good space, and and life is good. Uh, you can reach me at uh, Bill Norte, 15, B-I-L-L-N-O-R-T-E-1-5 at gmail.com. Uh, and my guest today, our guest today, Mark, like you said, I, I'm feeding you your anniversary present, a Pittsburgh <laughs> Pirate, a Dodger, a Pittsburgh Pirate, a Baltimore Orioles, and one more team. But this is a friend of mine. We go back to minor leagues. He was in Ogden, Albuquerque. Yeah. I was in the Caldwell. And San Antonio, this is a Mr. Lee Lacey, one of my favorite people, and boy, could he hit. How are you doing, Lee? Oh, man, I'm doing great, man. You know, uh, in my latter years, uh, I'm very thankful to be healthy. Uh, along the way, I've lost a lot of good friends, and I'm still, I still have you in the fold, Bill. It makes me proud, man, to, to be able to do this with you today. Thank you so much. I'm just looking at uh, uh, McClyman's High School alumni. Boy, you know, you guys had some dogs down there. <laughs> you know, we were, we were very fortunate uh, uh, there in uh, Northern California, uh, in West Oakland. It was a, uh, a whole host of very talented people, not only in baseball, but in basketball as well. We got a mm-hmm. Bill Russell. Who, Hall of Famer, who was a friend of mine who we just lost. We had another guy by the name of Paul Silas, also yep. went to McClymouth High School, and we just lost him as well. And uh, we had a guy named Nate Williams, who was in the same grade as me there at McClymouth yeah. High School, he graduated from me at 67. And then we had uh, Jim Tolliver, who was a great sprinter, and he set records in track and field. We just lost him as well. And uh, Jimmy Hines. That's right. And then we also had Frank Robinson, the uh, uh, Hall of Famer. We had Veda Pinson. We had Kirk Flood, also went to McClymouth High School. And wow. Of course, I went there too. But we had great coaching there. We had a guy by the name of Jim Pose, who was a scout with Cincinnati, along with uh, mentoring all the talent there in the Bay, Bay Area. We also had a guy by the name of, of uh, Jim. He was a. Uh, he was called uh, Beeman. Charlie Beeman was a Charlie player. Beeman. Yeah, you know, you know one of my favorites that went to, went there, who was a really, really, really nice man, is a guy named Veda Pinson. Veda Pinson, man, we lost him early on when he retired. Man, he got sick, and we lost him. But he moved back to the Bay Area, man. To be what a nice family. man! What a nice man, left-handed hitter. Also played with uh, Cincinnati Reds. Jim Pose was a scout with Cincinnati, so he got Frank, Veda Pinson. Uh, they had another guy by the name of uh, Willie Tasby, also is from yeah. the McClymouth High School. And all of them played sandlot ball right there. We had a park there that's still there called I'm Ramon Day Park. And it's I still know. there. Yeah. You had a guy there. named MC Hammer, too. MC Hammer went to my high school. You are absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. She did. I know. You know, I was, I lived in Oakland twenty some years. She did. She and did. It, hey, man, that's my town. But I know McClyman's is is historic. 
You know? Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about the Pioneer League and the Texas League that we Pioneer played League. together. Yeah. You know, you always led the league in hitting or was – we was all in, we were all in the top three. Me, you, and Enos Cabell, yeah. and and that uh, uh, you were with the Dodgers coming up through there, boy. We had some bus rides, didn't we? Wow, man, we're talking about Ogden. We're talking about Great Falls. We're talking about uh, Utah, Ogden, Utah. Uh, we're talking about Great Falls and Beaver Falls and all those in the Northwest there which was a really good league for us to play in because, um, you know, everything was right there where we were from. Most of the people who played in that league, we were all from the coast here. Yeah. You know, we had a guy by the name of Jim Rich who was a center fielder there in Ogden. He was from L.A. And then we had another guy named Randy Bear. He was, Randy uh, Bear. Randy Bear. And then we had Terry McDermott, too. Was, they were all the Midwest or the West Coast. He was so a catcher. Was a really good, yeah. He was yeah, yeah. yeah he, Terry McDermott was a catcher, man. Yeah. So it was wow. a great place to play, man. Yeah. And um, hey. you know, I was very blessed to be able to play there. Mark. Lee, yeah, thank you, Billy. Uh, Lee, I'll, I'll tell you this: not many people know this. Sixteen years playing the game, you appeared in four World Series in the seventies, and that had to be remarkable in more ways than one. You. You finally won it with the Pirates in 79, and getting to play with an idol of mine, Willie Stargell, never interviewed the guy, but I said to myself, when I get up to heaven one day, I'm going to let God request that interview and sit down with the guy, because what an inspiration, and I'll tell you, he is holding some marks in some stadiums if they haven't changed them. I know in Dodger Stadium, he put two balls completely over the 76 sign, and nobody's done that. And the other thing I'm sure he's accomplished in some of the cities where you were with him in was Philadelphia with some of those veterans stadium and probably St. Louis, the old Bush stadium. Take us through the Willie Stargell thing in the 79, because you guys, I think really went over the top when you brought in the mad dog, Bill Madlock from the giants in August yes. of that year. Yes. Willie Stargell, you ever come to my home? There's a huge picture in my office where I have all my trophies I have my Roberto Clemente Award in there next to him. I have my Black Sports Hall of Fame in there next to Willie Stargell. I have my Babe Ruth Hall of Fame in there next to Willie Stargell. Willie Stargell was my mentor. Willie Stargell took me under his wing when I became a pirate. He took me to his home. We ate together. We went to the ballpark together. What a great gift. He was a, he was a leader, man. He was a leader in the clubhouse. And he kept us together. And he's the one that came up with the theme song, We Are Family, with Sister Sledge, when they got up on the dugout and they sang, We Are Family. So Willie was a leader in more ways than one. He was like a uh, a guy that made sure we was um, doing all the right things, taking extra batting practice. If we were in a slump, uh, he was the one to say, you know, you got to hustle. If we wasn't hustling, uh, he always prepped us that we were going to be playing that day because Chuck Tanner, uh, he believed in a platoon, uh, platoon system when I was there. It was Mike Easler and I who platooned, who platooned in left field, and then Bill Robinson platooned with Billy with uh, Willie sometime at first base. But Willie was not only a great player, man, he was a great mentor, not only to me, uh, but to everyone in the clubhouse. We called him Pops to show you how much we believed in what he said. And, you know, he held, he held all the team meetings. He made sure uh, we were all ready to go and ready to play every single day. And I remember there in Baltimore, wow. we were That's three great. games down, man, and we had a meeting in the clubhouse, man, and he got up and he spoke, man. It was something like we were all reborn that day. Because if you remember, we were three down and we came back. We were one of the few teams to ever accomplish that. And it was because of Willie. When Willie spoke, you can hear a pin drop in the clubhouse. Man, he was a real, true leader. And wow. we, I really miss him right today. I remember we had a we were at an old-timers game. And uh, we, uh, we were all there. And uh, 
I remember being in my hotel room, and he called me, and we were talking. He said, man, you know, I fell the other day. And I mm-hmm. said, you fell? He said, yeah, man, I fell, and I hurt myself. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, you know, how are you doing? You know, we had a nice conversation. And he said he was getting to the ballpark early. So I got there early that day, too. But he was limping really bad. And uh, we all got together in the clubhouse. And uh, Chuck Tannen was still alive at the time. And Chuck said, all you guys are going to be announced. And all you guys are going to take the field once you are announced. But Willie is not going to be announced and once you guys are all announced, Willie's going to be announced last, and I want you guys to all run off the field and give him a big hug and just show how happy you are to have him. And right after that, we lost Willie. He passed away maybe wow. yeah, a year or two, maybe even not even a year after that, man. But he was really struggling, man. And uh, I remember the conversation we had there that morning. He was saying that he was on dialysis and, you know, and, uh, and he was just struggling with the health. He had a lot of health issues, and, and you know, he was always a pretty thick guy. You know, but we we got a chance to celebrate him uh, with uh, Joe Lynette was still alive at the time. Uh, Al Monchek was still alive at the time. And Skinner, who's still alive right now, and uh, his favorite was Joe Lynette. He loved Joe Lynette. Joe Lynette was still alive. I had Joe. Harvey Mm -hmm. Haddix was our pitching coach. He was still there, man. Mm -hmm. So it was a great time, man. And I can go on and on about Willie, man. He uh, was a glorious man he was. Oh, man. And 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 respected throughout baseball. And and he merited every ounce of respect that he got. But he was such a kind person. And I'd go down to first base, and he had that ball in his glove, and he tapped me on my ankle. I said, don't do that. I remember that, that, Billy. I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. I remember that, man. Yeah, he should tap you on your ankle with the ball in the glove, and it used to be like a blackjack. (laughs) Yeah. 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 He was a very special guy. Yeah. But yeah, I like to think about him in the positive tone. Uh, uh, I want to ask wow. you about one thing: that uh, uh, forty stolen bases one year. How, come on, man, that's that's quite a few. Who is that? You. Oh yeah, man. Um, that was an eighty-two. 42, 42 st- 40 stolen bases. Come on, bud. You know, man, what really, really uh, hampered my development as a guy who starts stealing bases at a later time in his career, mm-hmm. uh, I was rushed to the big leagues. I, 1969, I was rated as one of the top players in the state of California. I was second-round draft choice of the Dodgers. I played rookie ball there in Ogden. As you know, in 69, and then 70, I played at Bakersfield. We won it all, and they've never won a championship game there since then in 1970 at Sam Lynn Ballpark. And I trans- I, w- I was switched from third base after being one of the top third basemen in the whole state of California in 69. I end up, they switched me over to shortstop because they said I had too much range to play third. And then... I played shortstop that year at Bakersfield. Never played it before in my life. Then a following, I made an all-star at Austin, all-star at Bakersfield playing short. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Albuquerque, and I was all-star second base. So I played three different positions there uh, before I even got to the major league. So when I got to the major league, all of a sudden they wanted me to play the outfield, and I had never played the outfield in my life. So I spent a lot of time trying to play various positions, Instead of working on my 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 base stealing ability, I, it no. didn't come out until I became a pirate when I got with a guy by the name of Al Monchak, and I ended up having 190 stolen bases in my career, which is not too shabby. Yeah, the no, that's pretty good. Actually, yeah. you had Matt Alexander too, didn't you? Yes, we had Matt Alexander. Matt yeah. Alexander and I still converse. We still talk. I need his yeah. number. Yeah, I'll get it to you. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, you know what's amazing? 
you, you know, Lee, what people don't realize is how hard – I mean, when you came to the Pirates, you could flat out hit. But I don't know what the mandate was in Pittsburgh because everybody had seen that came in through Pittsburgh, they flat out knew how to hit in their sleep. But the, when you're, the, Mark, what you accomplished – When you're around hitting, when you're around yeah. hitting you hit. Yeah. yeah. But here, here's the thing. Just pinch hitting – even in those days you, with, with the Dodgers in, in 78, you, you were, you know, three straight days where you uh, pinch hit, uh, hit a home run. You set a major league record. Do you ever sit back and reflect on what you've accomplished? Because I've always told this to Bill. Uh, I don't want to disrespect doctors or lawyers on this show, but the hardest thing in life is to play major league baseball and to play it for more than a cup of coffee. That's something where you can light a victory cigar and reflect on that, even at the great old age of 75 and still looking good, my friend, like Billy North does. <laughs> Thank you. Let sir. me tell you something. This I guy, had a good life, man. <laughs> this, guy, this guy came out of the womb hitting. Okay? Yeah. When he was born, he was a hitter. He buried that head behind that front shoulder and stay right there. I don't tell you, all the time make contact. You know what the Pure Dodgers say? Hitter. You know what the Dodgers say about me? Because uh, I don't go to a lot of functions that they have. It says, oh, well, you know, you don't have a great stats. But when I came up in the 70s, man, it was so much controversy about African-American men playing. If you didn't hit yeah. with power or you wasn't a gifted uh, yeah. Center fielder like Bill North, you just didn't play every day. They said, well, you know, uh, African, if you're African American, you got to hit with power to play every day. And they moved me all around. If I had stayed in one position, third base, I was a great third baseman. I should have stayed there. I think I would have had 3,000 hits. 3,000 hits. I still ended up with 1,300 hits. But let me just mention, mention the background of my ability to play this game. I had a father who played second base. I had an uncle, uh, Leroy, who played first. I had an uncle, Jesse, who played third. My uncle, Walter, was a third baseman. Then I had an uncle, Hiawatha, who was a left-handed pitcher. And they all played in East Texas with a guy by the name of Charlie Neal. Now, Charlie Neal played for the Dodgers, but my father and him played in that Negro League right there. So I had great mentors around me. I want to give my uncles and my father all the credit in the world because when I was seven years old, when I was younger than that, they put a glove on my hand and a bat in my hand, and and I went to all the different uh, functions in the Bay Area that allowed me to play. Because when I came along in the 50s there in Oakland, it was a crazy time, a crazy climate. We had uh, taken a train in 1950. I came to Oakland. I was two years old. And we took a train out here to Oakland. But you know what's really weird is on the way out here, we stopped at the uh, station there uh, in L.A. I can't even think of the station now. It's still there. We we stopped at the station there overnight, and they had to take me to the hospital because I was born with asthma. So I spent overnight here in, in uh, L.A., before Grand Grand Central Station in in, in L.A. I don't I'm, I know it's probably I know I did, I've gone into that railroad station as a kid too. Did yeah. you really, Billy? I spent the yeah. night there, man. Before we headed out to uh, to the Bay Area there, and uh, and I was two years old, man. But I was born with asthma, so I was coughing all the time, and and uh, we stopped over here, and I ended up playing here, but. In the early 30s, the Dodgers trained in my hometown, Longview, Texas, and that's how they picked up Charlie Neal. Uh, Charlie, uh, and you, you know what? We've, we've got a, a few people listening out of Atlanta, and they're basically, you want to know, how was it you playing in Atlanta? I know you were there a short time. I loved but, it. You know, take I us through it. how Atlanta was. That That had to be an experience. Atlanta team is an organization that I give the utmost respect for because Atlanta Braves was the first organization, although we didn't mention them at the beginning of the show. That's the one gave miss, me, yeah. That gave me the opportunity to play every day. And uh, I just didn't play well there. I didn't play well at second base. And the Dodgers are so apt 
and making me a utility player until it was really confusing at the time because I had a lot of talent, a lot of speed, and they was trying to make me out of this player that I wasn't because of guys like Davey Lopes and Ron Say and Bill Russell and Garvey who went on and played uh, record-setting infield for the Dodgers. So I was the odd man out always, so I had to learn how to play all these different positions. But Atlanta Braves really gave me an opportunity to play second base every day, and I blew it. I didn't play well there. And uh, I was traded for uh, Dusty Baker and Ed Goodson. And the yeah. Dodgers found out I was available there in 76 after getting traded in 75 after I had a grand yeah. year with the Dodgers, and they traded back for me. But Atlanta, I give them all the praise, and I love that organization for noticing my talent and giving me that opportunity to excel. And I let them down. I really did. I went on and had a long time, a long career and set some records with the Dodgers when I came back. I had three consecutive pinch hit home runs. I'm an all-time pinch hit home run leader with the Dodgers with uh, five coming off the bench that they never mentioned. And um, so I'm very pleased for that. But I give Atlanta all the praise and the glory for recognizing my talent at a very young age. Thank you, Atlanta. Let me tell you something. There was a guy that was a teammate of mine in Los Angeles who was considered one of the greatest pinch hitters of all time. His name was Manny Mota. Yes. Yes. If you learn that his knee, that explains a lot of things. Manny Mota is the best. (laughs) Manny Mota was a very smart hitter. They don't give him a lot of credit for that. All they think about is Manny coming off the bench and hitting but Manny was one of the first guys because Manny was the guy come off the bench in the in the in the seventies there to pinch hit for singles. I was the guy that hitting doubles and home runs coming off the bench. Yeah, but Manny he can drive Mota in and run too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manny Mota was a smart hitter. Man, he always sit on the ball from the middle plate in, and, and he was a big su- success. He was just inducted into the legends. Dodger Legends Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah. Well, wonderful. Not only that. You know, I, was, I was just down there, and for my 75th birthday, uh, uh, me and my family, because they're all there, we went to the Dodgers game. And uh, they had a bobblehead of Mookie Betts. Oh, what a great player. When I was coming out of the stadium, there was a lady over there and she was trading some of her bobbleheads that she had picked up in the past. And guess who I traded Mookie Betts for? Manny Mo. Ma- there you go, sitting on my desk right now. Wow. Yeah. You know, I wanted to get a couple quick questions in, in real fast. And we're up, we got about eight minutes. And Lee, I wanted to ask you because you, you played with three great pitchers. And, and, and quite a bit more, but the three that come to mind, Don Sutton, Phil Negro in Atlanta, and then Burt Blylevin in L.A. Um, compare, I mean, one throw had the best curveball that I haven't seen being thrown in baseball today in Burt Blylevin. Phil Negro with the knuckleball and consistently Don Sutton in L.A. Well, one guy who was one of the greatest, and this is just my opinion, his name was James Rodney Richardson. He oh, was yeah. Richardson. one of the most yeah. extraordinary right-handed pitchers that I have ever witnessed in my time, and I played from 69 to 88. James Rodney was not only a power pitcher, but he was a power pitcher with control over speed. In other words, he can change, he can throw the breaking ball for a strike. He had a real yeah. good change up, and he yeah. had a fastball. Yeah. He was he was unbelievable, and he had a stroke. Very unfortunately, his health yeah. didn't hold up, and he had a stroke, and then he was sidelined. But if he had to continue to pitch, now he was phenomenal. Now, when you come to guys like Don Sutton, he was definitely just control over speed. He didn't throw that hard. But he's tied in the strike ball. ball. Yeah, he's definitely I mean, in the strike zone too. Yeah. yeah, but one of the toughest pitches I ever faced was James Rodney, and then right after that, 
was Bird Bly Leonard with that yacker and that fastball. And those guys in the days when we when we came along, Bill and I, most of those guys you just mentioned, they were out there for nine innings. Yeah. There wasn't no five and fly. Those guys, there was no pitch count. Those guys was out there for nine innings. All and, of them had. When you went to Houston, though, when you went to Houston, you faced James Rodney (laughs) Ridgeon, and then they backed him up with Nolan Ryan. (laughs) Everybody likes fastballs, but don't nobody want a whole (laughs) truckload. Man, you know you took the words right out of my mouth, Billy. Man, that's the truth, man. They, you, they, 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 the you guys played. Yeah. yeah, you guys played in the heyday when some of the best arms were on display in Major League Baseball. You can throw Dwight Evans in there, but I'm going to be a little biased here. And you played with him, Lee. Uh, I think in in, in Raul Mondesi had another good arm in L.A. But I'm I'm going to put Dave Parker up with anybody. That throw in Just Seattle don't. in the All Star game had to be one of the best throws I've ever seen. Well, they had another guy over there too, Mark. His name yeah, Clemente. was Clemente. Yeah. yeah. You talking about an arm? So he was in the class by himself. I don't. You know, I, and, and I didn't see too much of Clemente in the Haiti, but you know, I, I, I saw him a little. And God bless his soul. Uh, you know, dying early. But man, the Parker when he uncoiled that cobra-like frame. <laughs> oh man. They can talk Mookie bets, but I take the Cobra, man, when he just uh, – unbelievable what he had. And not only that, guys, what he faced in Pittsburgh and being from the city and, 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 and just a, a, a disarray of the throwing batteries when he signed the big contract, that is just downright terrible what, what he had to go through in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Dave Parker is the most power hitter outfielder that I ever played with. Now, Eddie Murray is the most talented player all around that I that I hit for power, hit for average on a daily basis. Now, Dave Parker was great. He had a great arm, and he was a big guy, and he played every day. But when you put that Eddie Murray on the field, who was a first-time Hall, Hall of Fame, good uh, job, yeah. Eddie Murray, Man, he was he was something special, man. All they talked about was Cal Ripken. That Eddie Murray was amazing, man. Dave Parker, big guy, greatest outfielder I ever played with was Dave Parker. One of the greatest infielders I played with, and I have to mention it was Eddie Murray, man. Quiet assassin, man. He was phenomenal, man. And that's that was speak that way. His numbers speak that way, yeah. Ooh, well, Bill, I was so let, lucky. Let, maybe you can, maybe you guys me. can break the tie. Maybe you can break the tie because I've got this thing, and, and Bill, Bill North can bring them, the A's teams in the heyday, and I'm, you can bring the the Dodgers and everything. There was a running debate on a show I had the other day with a guy, and he told me the 1998 New York Yankees were the best offensive team he's ever seen in baseball, and I said, well. You didn't. You never saw the 1976 Cincinnati Reds or the A's or the heyday. To me, this. To me, the 70s, and I'll I'll be 62 in November, Lee, and and Bill knows this. The 70s to me stand out as the best decade in baseball by far. I agree 100 percent, man. You can never ever sweep the Cincinnati Reds under the carpet, man. They were <laughs> phenomenal. Well, the only thing I'll tell you, only thing I'll tell you is from, I would say from 54, 53 to 1980, the greatest ball players ever to play the game play. And I think that when you talk about the 70s, I'm not, I'm not biased at all, but <laughs> just, just flat out statistical, uh, uh, proof lies in the fact that one team in the 70s won three straight World Series. Yeah. yeah. And, and could have won more if their owner hadn't gone crazy. But I'm not being biased at all, you know. <laughs> but it sounds to me like the best team in the 
seventies was the Oakland A's. Just man, like the Oakland A's was phenomenal. They beat us in nineteen seventy four World Series, man. When they went out to play with Campy Campaneris and Green and then they had Sal Bando and then they had um Joe Rudy and they had Billy North and Reggie Jackson out there and then they had Catfish Hunter and then they had the other left handed they comes in there. I can't think of his name. Holtzman and Vitamin Blue. Woo! Man, they were tough, man. You know, we're we're out of time, and we got to bring you back. And I wouldn't mind running a two-part on this. We have exceeded over 400 lives on this show, and it's 30 yeah. minutes. Uh, yeah. Bill, I, I wouldn't mind making this a two-part next week. It's up to yeah, you to – you, you, I mean, and it would be next Wednesday – just have Billy to yeah. get in touch with me because next year. Yeah, Tuesday, I'll take care of it. Yeah. yeah. You know you know what I want to get into, uh, Lee? I want to get into Jennifer Lacey, the uh, WNBA. Yeah. I want to talk about that, yeah. too. And, boy, there's so yeah. much to we're talk the only about. Daughter. We're the only yes, daughter. your baby. Yeah, we're the only one who ever won world championships. No one ever talks about that. That's my yeah. baby. Man. No, we're I want to I wanna get into world. that. I want to get into a lot more. <laughs> I appreciate your time. I love you tremendously. And what Bill did to me, he just keeps surprising me, you know, with uh, the great things. And what a wedding anniversary this is for this Wednesday, 37 years being married, to bring a former Pittsburgh Pirate in on the show. Yeah. It's just yeah. simply amazing that, uh, gosh, unbelievable, Bill. Bill, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you, my brother, because this show keeps taking it up new levels with God driving the bus. I know that's right. He, he's done it for a while, hasn't he? Uh, you can reach me at Bill Norte, B-I-L-L-N-O-R-T-E-1-5 at gmail.com. And Lee Lacey, thank you so much. And we're going to do it. We'll do a two-part thing. I'll, uh, we'll hook it up. Because okay, I'm looking yeah, definitely on this one. And hopefully I can get out this weekend and say hi to our brother out there in uh, L.A., the Houston Astros are in Los Angeles this weekend, so Dusty Baker coming yeah, to town. I'll see, so. Dusty. I'll see Dusty on the 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, yeah. we used to I'm... ride into the ballpark together, all three of us. Oh, gosh. I love him dearly. we got to get him back on. Show's picking up steam. Four, Billy North in Seattle, Lee Lacey out there. Hopefully he's in Pittsburgh and looking at a Pirate-Cub yeah. game there as the Pirates and Cubs battle no, tonight. No, I'm in, I'm in Julie... L.A. Oh gosh, he's in he's in Hollywood. He I'll tell you, yeah. we gotta push it, uh, Bill. We gotta push a he's gonna get a star on that Hollywood Walk of Fame. We gotta let these guys know who yeah. the heck Lee Lacey is. Yeah. Here's truly Thank Mark you. Mancini in Los Angeles. I love you dearly, my friend. Thank Catch you. the archive yeah. version on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports Podcast platforms wherever you subscribe to podcasts. See you next week. God bless, right, and thank you, Billy Norton, Lee Lacey. All right. Thank you. Thank you, partner.